To conclude videos on regressions, I actually wanted just to show you this, like, you know, we have this time series, but we also have another way of analyzing data. We can just use the regular regression because we will have this um, trend variable that we definitely have to include because it was able to re explain 50% of the variation in the um, total rates, right? So we have to go to analyze regression, linear regression. And um, this is our dependent variable. All the other variables are going to be explanatory variables. And then you can go to model. Here you actually have a lot of choice. Like you can do forward selection, backward selection, stepwise, and so on. We're just going to go for the full regression right now. Uh, statistics, we're going to add Durbin Watson. And plots, uh, pretty much these plots would be enough. So we can just stick to them. And predictions, we will ask for the original sample and it residuals and labor prediction limits. And um, yeah, so we can also ask to show predictions if you want to, and we can run. So again, our uh, R squared should be the same as uh, the R squared from here, which is uh, 0 0.7643 and um, they coincide, but we also have um, a chance to look at the adjusted S squared. It's 0 0.7623. I mean, it didn't change really considerably, but still it's uh, kind of useful to know it. The model, now we can see if the model is significant that it is. So then um, we can continue. Still, we have the same information, the same um, coefficients. So nothing changed, but what we have here is that we have more plots and these plots uh, they help us to analyze the residuals because you definitely have you know you have those four assumptions right so one of them is that they are not autocorrelated and that's uh, what we use Durbin test for right and we discussed already that they are unfortunately so one assumption is violated and this assumption is uh, critical so that means that we have actually to do something to this model to improve it somehow uh, in order to reduce uh, the total correlation or maybe like difference the data or maybe um, add more variables or do something else. The other assumption is that our residuals um, fluctuate around the mean of zero, that they are normal, and also that the, they have a constant variance. But if we look here, we have our residuals and we can see that the variance actually is not constant. They, it's true that they do fluctuate around the mean of zero, more or less, but they're not random. And you actually want your residuals to be randomly distributed. But here you can see that um, they, they're not like forming a pattern. Uh, actually, they are. So they're forming like a funnel or something like that. So here, you know, we were very close to the right answer, but with time, we were going too far from it, you know, maybe, or whatever the reason was here. So the variance is not normal. And again, like it can be fixed by adding more explanatory variables, maybe, or maybe removing some variables. It's really difficult to say. It's also possible that we have some outliers, like here, you can actually see these outliers, they exceed, uh, two standard deviations and they actually can be officially called outliers. You also have Cook's D plot uh, where you can also see some outliers and uh, that gives you an idea, you know, you have an observation here, right? So that gives you an idea that uh, which observations um, are outliers. Actually, uh, you can add a code that will show you the exact numbers here and you will see which outliers um, are kind of causing the trouble in this beautiful and nice ocean, you know, of variables and observations that would have produced maybe a perfect model for you, but they couldn't because of these outliers. Uh, so this is the normality plot and they are supposed to stick to this line, but they don't. So you should also look out for this and it's kind of normalish, but it's still not perfect, right? Um, and here again, this is your uh, you would expect a bell-shaped distribution, but it's not exactly so. Again, 
this is something to look out for but the normality distribution is something that you can ignore when you have more than like let's say um, 200 observations or more so this is the assumption that can be violated it's not a big deal because you have a lot a lot of data points but if you have this kind of variance you shouldn't expect uh, to have accurate predictions if you if the data is not normal or if the residuals are not normally distributed again you shouldn't expect uh, to have accurate predictions and um, in addition our residuals are uh, positively autocorrelated and that's again uh, that's a problem so in our case you know uh, there is nothing we can do but to reject the model or keep working on it by including more variables and it's highly possible that at some point we'll reach you know that point when we see some randomness here and we'll see no patterns and maybe even the normality will be fixed as well so that's um, that's the idea of looking at these graphs so when you do uh, the time series regression you have just a small output you know like a, just a few graphs right uh, but here actually you can have a lot more graphs and that's that's good and also we have like these predictions as well so you can check them out and um, we are missing these data points but now these are our predictions based on the formula that we reached so now you can go here and uh, you can just use this data where we have our uh, where do we have our predictions yeah predicted uh, count here so now you can go here and you can use um, this data point uh, to be able to predict uh, your uh, to be able to predict actually or to be able to calculate your residuals that's the idea